Jeff. I'm looking at this uh, this new engine you got here. 62 cc, right? Yep. What is this Surefire EFI? Well, the Surefire EFI is a uh, new fuel injection system for RC airplanes. Um, we've been wait working. A, wait a second. You said fuel injection for fuel RC injection. airplanes. Electronic fuel injection for RC airplanes. This is the first engine that it's going to be on. Um, we've worked four years on producing this brand new clean sheet engine design and incorporating the EFI with it to begin with. So, um, what's the point of doing the EFI? That's a good question. Well, what is, is the point? Okay, the point is to make it easier to operate. Now, wait a minute. Point's not for more power? No, that's a pretty common misconception about EFI. EFI, most people think of EFI as being a more powerful option over a carburetor, but in reality, an engine produces only so much power. You've got an air intake and an exhaust, and all you're doing is with an EFI or a carburetor is controlling how much fuel goes into it, not necessarily making the engine more powerful. Okay. The power of an engine is in the design and the internals, <laughs> timing, everything else that goes in now an engine operates, and the final factor is how you're gonna control this engine, okay. and that's what a standard carburetor or an EFI does. Now, what we wanted to do was to make it easier to operate because none of us these days thinks about how our car engine operates. We get in the car and either push a button or twist a key and it starts. There's no more choke and then three pumps on the accelerator and all this other kind of stuff to get it to start, which is a great thing. Nobody's complaining about that and wanting to go back to the old days. So what we looked at, we took a look at what is the most common thing that's going on in my particular area of expertise, which is engines in comparison in our marketplace. Well, these days, let's say 15 years ago, everybody started with a 40 size trainer. So the, one of the first lessons that you got was how to operate the engine. Start and tune. Right, start mm -hmm. and tune the engine. And so then you had all that experience and everybody at the club was flying some sort of a fuel or glow powered engine. And so you had a whole field full of some experience level or not. Experts in their Experts, own right. <laughs> right, right. And they're always that guy, you know, the, the guru guy that can walk over and look at the engine and it ran right. Mm -hmm. But you still didn't understand why it ran right. Right. Um, and so these days, most of the training and the experience is coming from the electric side of the house. They're starting with electric airplanes. There's whole clubs that are electric airplane clubs. And if somebody wants to get into a bigger airplane or wants the sound that comes along with gasoline or glow, mm -hmm they're kind of on their own within this electric world and they don't have that whole club's worth of experience around them to pull on. <clears throat> so now this guy's got to go out and buy the engine and kind of try to figure it out on himself. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is answer that question. This is the next step. How are you going to make the guy's experience with a gasoline engine as plug and play as possible or as close as possible to the plug in a battery in and the motor turns the propeller? And so that was the goal behind this um, EFI. Now, the misconception on the EFI provides more power comes from the fact that you and I can go to AutoZone or get online and we can buy a different chip for our own fuel injected system in okay. our cars. Mm -hmm. And you plug that in and then all of a sudden you've got more power, right? Well, that's because the car manufacturers have got two things to worry about when they're manufacturing their cars. They've got the emission side, and they've got the economy side. They want high economy and no emissions so they can pass all the testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, aftermarket chips just provide more fuel to, to the engine and now you have more power. You're probably not, you don't definitely don't have the same gas economy <laughs> right. and you may or may not be able to pass emissions anymore, but you do have more power. So I think that's in essence where the idea that fuel injection actually gives you more power or the, gives you the ability to tune for more power. Right. Well. If you think about the way that we use our engines, we're wanting all the power we can get all the time. Yeah. And that's exactly how I've programmed this, and this is exactly the way that this engine operates. So there really is, the only thing that you could do by changing this is actually take power away and make it run a little bit more efficiently, maybe. Okay. So now maybe you get 12 and a half minutes out of a tank instead of 12, if you're really concerned about that. But it's not, in my experience, that's not what our customers are looking for. Right, I know. They're, they're looking for power on demand. When they move that throttle stick, they want it to respond um, and things like that. So it doesn't kind of fit that. And because of that, we can actually use a fairly simplified system okay. in here. 
so that we don't have to have the really expensive sensors that go along with it. We're not chasing the emission standards, so you can't really put an O2 sensor right. on one of our engines because the, the oil and the fuel would ruin that sensor in 20 minutes. We tried yeah. it, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, you know, EGT sensors, so by, the by simplifying the whole process, so that we can deliver what we're looking for is maximum power when we want it and great transition through the mid-range and a reliable auto and an easy start. Now we can provide a fuel injected system at a price that all of our users can afford. Okay, now you just said price. So let's talk about that for a minute. What kind of starting price are we looking at on this engine? This engine is uh, comes at 62 cc. It comes this way out of the box with a muffler, ignition system, fuel injected carburetor for 579. 579, really? 579. I was expecting somewhere around eight, nine hundred dollars for that. So. Well, that's because the previous ignition or EFI systems that have been on the marketplace were all in the eight hundred dollar range for a much smaller engine. Okay. Twenty and twenty five cc size engines, like from OS, had their system out. It worked well, but it had a couple of setup problems. Okay. Um, it was difficult to set it up because they took uh, one of the sensors we use is a throttle position sensor mm -hmm. that understands what kind of power level you're asking for, or where you've got the throttle, and then it feeds that through our algorithms to control the engine. The OS system took that position information off of the throttle servo, not really? off of a sensor. Okay. And so unless you actually had the OS system set up perfectly, it wouldn't work. It, it didn't know where it really wanted to go. Mm -hmm. it, it was being told that it was in one position and it wasn't, so it would end up getting lost. Okay. And so it was difficult to operate that way. Okay. We've taken that out, put the throttle position sensor right on here, so you can set up your throttle as you typically would, put your servo wherever you want, horn length's exactly the same, and just make your adjustments in your transmitter for it to open and close. So we tried to take things that we've watched people do with EFI before and the difficulties that they've had and tried to address each one of those as we went through this process. Simple, simplify it down and make it so anybody can use it. Anybody can bolt it on and use it. Okay. It uses a single battery. Single battery? Single battery drives both the ignition system and the EFI. It's a simple single plug right here. Okay. It's a 2S LiPo battery. 2S LiFi will also operate it. Okay. Um, it does two things. It, we're increasing the voltage to the EFI, so that runs off of 12 volts. Okay. And then our ignition system just will take, without any kind of uh, voltage regulation, 7.4 volts off okay. of a LiPo, a LiPo battery anyway. And what size, as far as uh, uh, capacity, are we looking at for that 7.2 or 7.4 battery? We've been, I think if you were to put a 2,000 milliamp battery in your airplane, you'd be able to fly all weekend long. All weekend long. In wide open throttle, the Amtra is somewhere around 450 to 500. Mm -hmm. But that's only a wide open throttle, and you're probably only there 15% of the time. So typically, at the, if, if I were to go out and do a 12, 14 minute flight, mm -hmm. I would come down and use about 300 milliamps out of it. Okay. Now, Peter, you had mentioned 12 to 14 minute flight with that engine. What kind of fuel capacity are we looking at for something that? Wide open throttle, the, the typical flight draw is about two ounces per minute. Two ounces per minute. So, 16 ounce tank to a, to a 24 ounce tank. Okay. You know, very easily. I run a 24 ounce tank, set my timer at 12 minutes, and I come down and there's about a quarter to a third of a tank still left. Okay. So there's a lot of reserve there, but that's, that's something that they'll figure out pretty quickly. But it's, it's not a fuel hog, but it's very typical for a 60cc size engine. Okay. And being that it's a 60cc, I mean, is it based off of any, any of your previous engines? No, actually, this is a pretty cool, this is a clean sheet engine design that we started four years ago. And uh, we've done all the, the design work in-house at Horizon. Okay. And then we're manufacturing the engine over in China. The fuel injector unit is manufactured in the United States. So um, it's actually built in St. Louis. Okay. So we're using US technology to accomplish this and it is working out very, very well. Okay. Now we matched the bolt pattern to DA60 for the mounting bolt. 
propeller bolt matches the DA60, mm -hmm. and the uh, exhaust port matches the DA60. So a lot of common accessories okay. that are already out in the field will be usable on this engine right off the right from the beginning. So if the included muffler doesn't fit the application for the end user, they can we put a canister else. on it, anything like that. And we tested it well with a canister. Okay. The system finds its way amongst different size propellers. It finds its way amongst different kind of muffler systems and canisters. Oh, okay. So it, it does that all straight out of the box. Okay. And we had touched on the price earlier, 579, correct? 579. 579. Yep. And when are we looking at having this in the uh, market? Mid-May is Mid -May. when we should be shipping the first ones. Okay, so six weeks or so yeah. we should be able to have these uh, Joe Null time. up in the air. Yep, exactly. All right. Peter, thanks so much. Thanks.